Let's talk about what happens if you integrate even and odd functions. Even functions are functions in the form of f of x equaling f of negative x, whereas odd functions are negative f of x equals f of negative x. Here's some examples of graphs of even and odd functions. Cosine x and the absolute value of x, those are both even functions. And examples of odd functions are sine x and y equals x. If f is integrable on the interval negative a to a, with a being a real number, then I can say the following. If f is even, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx equals 2 times that same integral, but this time from 0 to a of f of x. Why is this so much easier? Well, if you recall, when we're evaluating definite integrals, we're plugging in those values at the limits of integration. And usually plugging in 0 makes a very easy calculation. And you can see if f is odd, then that same integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is simply equal to zero. And you can kind of see that with the sine. If I show this on the graph of sine x going from negative pi to pi, if you recall that area below the x-axis is negative area, and since the area below this curve and above the curve look identical, then that area is going to be equal to zero. Let's do some quick examples. If I look at this function, where my f of x is 3x to the fourth minus 1 half x cubed, I'm pretty sure that's neither even nor odd. However, I can split this up into two separate integrals. Once I do that, I recall that if I have x to the fourth, or x to any even power, that's going to be an even function. And if I have x to an odd number, that is a odd function if I'm dealing with pure polynomials. So that means the second term, this simply is equal to zero. And all I'm left with is calculating the first term. But before I do that, I notice that since that's an even function, I can change it to the following. And once I do that, I can go ahead and integrate, and I simply end up with, and I end up with this as my final answer. You should look for this anytime you see the limits of integration being a negative a to a situation. Let's do one more example. If I have something like this, again, if I notice an integral where I've got my limits of integration in the form of negative a to a, can I break this up into even and odd functions? And I can. When I break this up, I see I have a cosine and then a sine to the 25th power of x. I know that an odd function raised to an odd number is odd, so that means this term, like before, is going to simply equal zero. And on the first term, I have an even function, so I can rewrite that as two times that same integral going from zero to pi over two. When I do my integration, I simply get 22.